In this video, we will examine wet basis moistures versus dry basis moistures. Previously, we looked at moisture calculations involving wet basis moistures expressed as a percent water of the total weight of the material. Wet basis moistures can be very deceptive, as we shall soon see. And the problem is particularly obvious when we consider moisture differences. So let's look at 100 kilograms of apples at 84% moisture being dried to a final moisture content of 14% on a wet basis. We will compare it to drying 100 kilograms of potatoes from 78% moisture to a final moisture of 8%. In the case of the apples, the change in moisture is 70%. That is, 84% moisture in the initial product minus 14% moisture in the dried product. In the case of the potatoes, the change in moisture is also 70%. That is, 78% moisture in the initial product minus 8% moisture in the final dried product. If the moisture difference is the same, then shouldn't we have to remove the same amount of moisture in each case? We really don't need a diagram for this problem, so we can start by calculating the initial water and solids content for the fresh apples and then find the water content of the dried apples. Once this is done, we can calculate the amount of water removed. Having done this, we will do similar calculations for the potatoes. So to find the weight of the water in the fresh apples, we take the weight of the apples and multiply them by the moisture content expressed as a decimal fraction. This will give us 100 kilograms times 0 0.84. The 84% becomes 0 0.84 when we express it as a decimal fraction. And this gives us 84 kilograms of water in the fresh apples. The weight of the solids in the fresh apples will be the weight of the apples times the solids content as a decimal fraction. We then find that we have 100 kilograms times 16% solids as a decimal fraction, which is 0 0.16, and that gives us 16 kilograms of solids in the fresh apples. We're going to make an assumption here that we are not losing any solids in the drying process. This means that the weight of solids at the start will equal the weight of solids in the final product. And the percent solids in the final product will be 100% minus the percentage water, which gives us 100% minus 14% water in the dried product, or 86% solids. Now we're going to let the weight of the dried apples be x kilograms since we do not know the actual weight of the dried product. We can then prepare an equation that tells us that 86% of the final weight of the product will be solids. This is shown by 0.86x equaling the weight of solids in the product and we know that that's 16 kilograms. Here we have rewritten the equation as 0 0.86 equals 16 kilograms. We can now solve for x by dividing 16 kilograms by 0 0.86 and we find that we have 18.6 kilograms of final product. The weight of the water in the product will be the weight of the product minus the weight of the solids. We have 18.6 kilograms of product minus 16.0 kilograms of solids, or 2.6 kilograms of water will be in the final product. So the weight of water removed from the apples will be the weight of the water in the fresh apples minus the weight of water in the dried apples. That's 84 kilograms minus 2.6 kilograms, or 81.4 kilograms. Therefore, 81.4 kilograms of water must be removed to dry the apples. Now we can deal with the potatoes. We're going to start by calculating the initial water and solids content for the fresh potatoes 
and then find the water content of the dried potatoes. Once we have done this, we can calculate the amount of water removed. The weight of water in the fresh potatoes will be the weight of the potatoes times the moisture content as a decimal fraction, that's 100 kilograms, times 78% as a decimal, which is 0 0.78. That gives us 78 kilograms of water in the fresh potatoes. The weight of solids in the fresh potatoes will be the weight of the potatoes times the solids content as a decimal fraction. That's 100 kilograms times 0 0.22 or 22 kilograms of solids in the fresh potatoes. Once again, we can make the assumption that no solids are lost in the drying process. So we will have the weight of the solids at the start equaling the weight of the solids in the final product. We know the percent solids in the final product will be 100% minus the percent water. In the case of the potatoes, that's 100% minus 8% water in the dried potatoes. So we have 92% solids in the product. Here we will let the weight of the dried potatoes be y kilograms. We can then say that 92% of the weight y will equal the amount of solids in the product. That gives us 0.92y will equal 22 kilograms. Solving for y, we find that we have 22 kilograms divided by 0.92 or a total weight of 23.9 kilograms. The weight of the water in the dried product will be the weight of the product minus the weight of the solids or 23.9 kilograms of product minus 22.0 kilograms of solids for a difference of 1.9 kilograms which is equal to the weight of the water present in the product. Now the weight of the water removed from the potatoes will be the weight of the water in the fresh potatoes minus the weight of water in the dried potatoes. That's 78 kilograms minus 1.9 kilograms and the difference is 76.1 kilograms which means 76.1 kilograms of water must be removed to dry the potatoes. Both the apples and potatoes had a moisture change of 70 percent on a wet basis. Both had a starting weight of 100 kilograms. We had to remove 81.4 kilograms of water from the apples to get a 70 percent moisture change, but we only had to remove 76.1 kilograms of water from the potatoes to get a similar 70 percent moisture change. You cannot compare the differences in moisture content between two samples as we have done here. This is because wet basis moistures are not linear. We will see how this works in the following slides. Before we can go too much further, we need to introduce a second method of expressing moisture. This is the dry basis moisture and it expresses the moisture content as the weight of water per unit weight of dry solids. So the dry basis moisture can be defined as the weight of water divided by the weight of dry solids. It will have units of grams of water per gram of dry solids or kilograms of water per kilogram of dry solids. It can even have units of pounds of water per pound of dry solids as long as the units are dimensionally consistent for the weight of the water and the weight of the dry solids. To convert from wet basis moisture to dry basis moisture, we're going to start off by assuming that we have 100 kilograms of material. This simplifies matters tremendously. We can then multiply 100 kilograms by the percent wet basis moisture to get the weight of water. We can multiply the 100 kilograms by the percent solids to get the weight of the solids. Then we will divide the weight of water by the weight of solids to get the dry basis moisture. So let's do an example. 
what is the dry basis moisture of mangoes having a wet basis moisture of 85% by weight? We'll start with 100 kilograms of mangoes and this will contain 85 kilograms of water and 15 kilograms of solids. The dry basis moisture then will be equal to the weight of the water divided by the weight of the solids which is 85 kilograms of water divided by 15 kilograms of solids for a dry basis moisture of 5.67 kilograms of water per kilogram of solids, which is equivalent to 5.67 grams of water per gram of solids. To convert from dry basis moistures to wet basis moistures, we look at the dry basis moisture and consider what it is telling us. A dry basis moisture of 5.67 grams of water per gram of solids indicates that we are dealing with 5.67 grams of water and 1.0 grams of solids. This means that we have a total of 6.67 grams of material. That's the weight of the water plus the weight of the solids. So the total weight will be equal to the weight of the water plus the weight of the solids which is 5.67 grams of water plus 1.0 grams of solids for a total of 6.67 grams. And this is a key step. Even though it's very simple, you need to recognize the relationship here that it's telling you how much water you have in one gram of dry solids. And that will enable you to find the total weight with which you are dealing. So the percent wet basis moisture is defined as being the weight of water divided by the total weight and then we have to multiply this by 100 percent. We'll take the 5.67 grams of water divided by 6.67 grams total weight, multiply that by 100 percent and get 85.0 percent as the wet basis moisture. Now let's draw a graph where we put the wet basis moisture on the vertical axis and the equivalent dry basis moisture on the horizontal axis. And we'll note how the line on the graph is not straight. This tells us that there is not a linear relationship between the wet and dry basis moistures. Here we see the wet basis moisture on the vertical axis versus the dry basis moisture on the horizontal axis with their appropriate units. There is a rather steep slope at the beginning of the graph, but it becomes almost horizontal as you go to the top right. Now let's do some additions of water to one gram of dry solids in steps of one gram of water. We will then show these on the graph and explain what we see happening. So take a look at the bottom left hand corner we have zero grams of water per gram of dry solids. Then we're going to move across to the point where we add one gram of water to that gram of dry solids. This gives us two grams in total of which the water makes up 50% of that. So the equivalent wet basis moisture is 50%. So we'll draw a dashed vertical line up to the point where it reaches that solid curve and then scribe a horizontal dashed line over to the axis on the left and find that the wet basis moisture content is 50 percent. So by adding that one gram of water to the dry solids we got a change in the wet basis moisture content of 50 percent. If we start with three grams of water per gram of dry solids this is equivalent to 75 percent wet basis moisture. Adding one gram of water to that we get four grams of water per gram of dry solids which is equivalent to 80 percent wet basis moisture. And the difference here by adding one gram of water to that mixture is only a change of five percent. So by adding an equivalent amount of water on the left hand side of the graph when we started with zero grams of water per gram of dry solids, we got a 50% change. But by adding the same amount, going from three grams of water per gram of dry solids 
to four grams of water per gram of dry solids, we only got a change in the wet basis moisture content of 5%. And this is where the wet basis moisture is really quite deceptive. So if you are really serious about drying and need to do calculations, you should be working with dry basis moistures. Dry basis moistures are based on a unit weight of dry material and do not introduce the problems associated with wet basis moistures. Thank you very much.